You guys can go ahead. Okay. So joining me today, oh, firstly, uh, oh, Jewel, I can see she's joined the room. Great. So uh, I'm Wendy. I'm coming to you live from James Cook University, and I'm joined today by Maddie McKenzie, who is one of our current PhD students. Thank you very much for joining us. We're going to have a relatively informal discussion about student life at JCU. So I'm going to start, Maddie, by asking if you could just give us some general background about what brought you to JCU and why. Yep. Hi, everyone. As Maddie said, I'm Maddie, um, and I am currently a PhD student at JCU. I just started my second year, um, and I originally was drawn to JCU because of the marine biology. Uh, which I think is the case for a lot of students that are at JCU right now. Um, so I originally studied abroad at JCU for a semester, and then I went back home to my university in the U.S., and I graduated, and then once I graduated, I decided I wanted to do a master's, and so I applied for a master's at JCU in marine biology, and then I got accepted, and I moved here, and I've been here ever since. Thanks, Maddie. And so uh, you're based in Townsville and we have campuses in Townsville and Cairns. Uh, Townsville is home of our marine biology program. Could you tell us a little bit about Townsville? Yeah, um, let's see. Well, it's in paradise. Um, you're right off the Great Barrier Reef. Um, if you have a friend that has a boat, you're extremely lucky. You can go out there as much as you'd like. Um, Townsville itself, it's, I'm not quite sure of the population, um, but it's relatively small, at least compared to what I was used to in the US. Um, the JCU campus itself, I know for Australia, I think it's a medium to larger size campus. Um, but for me, I came from a really large university in the US. And so moving over here, the campus to me is really small, which I really like because it's really easy to get around. It takes just minutes to walk from building to building. Um, yeah, and then Townsville itself, there's a lot of things to do in outdoors in Townsville. So if you're really interested in outdoorsy kind of stuff, it's a really fun place to live. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to get bored living here. Thanks, Maddie. And can you just tell me a little bit, a lot of questions that we get sort of relate to the weather, um, particularly for students coming from colder parts of the world. Could you um, talk just a little bit about your experience with the weather? What's yeah. it like? Is it hot? Is it cold? <laughs> Do people need to bring their jackets? <laughs> it is very humid. Um, that's That was the main thing that kind of affected me. Um, so I'm from Nebraska in the US, so we get really hot summers and really cold snowy winters. And so moving here, the winter here is perfect weather. Like it's beautiful, wear shorts, wear t-shirt, it's gorgeous. And then the summer, it's about that same temperature, just much more humid. Um, so it's still nice, it's definitely paradise. I enjoy this weather more than snowy weather back home, but it's definitely warm. So if you move over here, I suggest finding a place that has air con because you'll definitely use it. Thanks, Maddie. Could you tell me though, um, one of the comments I've had from students is that uh, because it is warm, people expect that it's warm everywhere, but inside the buildings can often be not so warm. Is that your experience too, that you still do sometimes need like a sweater just for particularly in laboratories or the library or something like that? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, all of the buildings, are, they have air conditioning, so they're quite cold. Um, so I know when I come onto campus, I always bring like a jacket or I wear long pants, you know, uh, because the buildings are quite chilly, but it's nice because then you walk outside and you, you're reminded, oh, it's really hot. <laughs> I'll value this air conditioning <laughs> the building. So while you're studying, you don't have to be worried about being uncomfortably warm. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the facilities? So you're studying in, in the marine biology facilities. I, I'm guessing you're there right now based on your background. Um, so the facilities on campus, but also maybe some of the facilities that you might have visited as a student, um, either in any of your journey at JCU 
Um, so maybe some of the field areas or, or some of the affiliated research components like AIMS or other industry um, engagement that you might have had at JCU? Yeah, um, there are just on campus itself, there are lots of different laboratories um, that you can have access to. And so right now I'm in a building where I was just in the lab. Um, so yeah, there's multiple different laboratories that you can have access to, which is great. Um, there's never, there's never any, you know, crowded areas in the lab, which is nice. And then um, in terms of research areas that JCU is affiliated with, um, there's the Australian Institute of Marine Science that's located about 45 minutes outside of Townsville. And I know a lot of students do a lot of their laboratory work out there. Um, and I've been out there, I used to volunteer there and it's a really great facility. Um, and then there's also Lizard Island Research Station I've never been, but I hear it's amazing. And I've seen photos and it looks gorgeous. And I know you can go out there as well um, to conduct research. And then there's also Orpheus Island and that's an island that is probably two and a half to three hours north of Townsville. And then it's an island that's 45 minutes off the coast. Um, and you can go there, a lot of courses that you can take, they have um, field trips that you will go out to Orcas Island and you'll be out there for maybe four or five days and you'll conduct research. And so I've been out there a couple of times and it's really fun to get out there, you know, and do hands-on research, looking at the wildlife there. So speaking of research, um, would you mind just giving us a little bit of an introduction into what you're studying? Yeah, so I'm looking at jellyfish and more specifically, I'm looking at the upside down jellyfish. And so this jellyfish, as its name suggests, instead of a normal jellyfish that's in the water column like this, this jellyfish just sits upside down on the benthos and it just pulses. And the reason why it does that is because within its tissues, it has zooxanthellae similar to corals. And so what I'm looking at is, can these jellyfish make a good biomonitor for different toxicants that are found in the water? Um, and so I actually did my master's research project looking at these jellyfish and I exposed them to different herbicides that are found in waterways. And it was, it was found that they do make good biomonitors for those herbicides. And so for my PhD, I decided, you know, let's take this a step further and let's see if they can make good biomonitors to a range of other toxicants that are found in the water. It always amazes me at how, how narrow um, an area of research can be by the time you get to, to PhD level. And I, I suppose I wanted to ask if students were looking more generally, not just at marine biology, but maybe other environmental sciences, do you find that there, there's um, good crossover between students across levels? Or is it that bachelor level students tend to speak to each other and master's level students tend to speak to each other and PhD students speak to each other? Or do you find that there's networking amongst the groups? I think there's pretty good networking amongst the groups. Um, I know when I did my master's, I did a master's by coursework. And so for the first year, I just took classes. And then the later part of my uh, degree, I did research. But in that first year when I took classes, there were a lot, there were a range of students that attended those classes. Um, some of them being bachelors, you know, some of them being masters. Um, and so you did get to, you know, you were exposed to other students. Um, it's just if you were doing a higher degree, like I was, um, you would get more assignments to do, basically. Um, and they would, they would mark you, you know, like you were a master's student. Um, but there is a good crossover between students. So you do get to interact with a lot of different students. It's, it's one of the things that we hear, and I, I didn't prepare you for that question, so I, I really wanted to know what your response was, but it was it's certainly something that we hear is that, um, and, and some of the teaching spaces really facilitate, you know, those large laboratories where multiple levels of students can be together, um, which obviously helps from an employability perspective. Um, what about your interaction with staff? Do you find staff generally 
approachable? Is it set hours when you can talk to staff? Sort of how, how does that work from a, a student professor perspective? So that was one thing that I really liked um, about JCU because I mentioned earlier that to me, it's a much smaller campus. And so all of the classroom sizes, they're much smaller than I was used to previously. And so it was a lot easier to approach the professors. Um, and also coming from the US, I feel like professors here, they're much more laid back. Um, you know, you can call them by their first name and they don't care. Um, yeah, they're really easy to talk to and they're really relatable as well. Um, so that was one of the things that I really liked about this, about JCU. And I should just mention there that you're working with one of the, the foremost experts in the world on jellyfish, right? So, you know, did your master's studies help you create that relationship to move into the PhD? Yes, yeah, actually, um, I took, so my supervisor is Dr. Mike Kingsford. And I actually took one of his classes that he taught during my, um, during my coursework from, of my master's degree. And then in the latter part of my master's degree, I did a research project. And so to find a research project, basically you, you just approach professors and you ask them, you know, do you have anything that I could research? And after the class with Mike, I really liked him. He was really easy to talk to. And so I approached him and I asked if he had any research projects that I could look into. And he did. And it was looking at the upside down jellyfish. And so that's actually how I got into my PhD. Um, I did my master project with Mike. And then once I graduated, you know, I asked him, I'm interested in taking this research further. Would you be willing to be my supervisor for a PhD? And he said he would be. So that's how I got to where I am right now. That's really good to know. Um, I will just invite, we've just got a few minutes left. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A and we can respond to those as we're going. But in the meantime, I'm gonna keep asking you questions, Maddie. So outside of the class, we've talked a bit about the facilities and, and the environment in Townsville and on campus. Um, we have an international student support team who arrange a whole bunch of activities. Uh, could you speak a little bit about maybe some of the activities that happen on campus not just specifically for marine students, but more focused on international students? Yeah, um, they have, I think it's every Tuesday morning at the JC Townsville it campus, is. <laughs> um, they have free breakfast, um, which it's great to go to. I mean, when you're a student, anything that's free is amazing. Um, and I used to go to that every Tuesday, but now that I'm doing a PhD, I, I don't have time to go, unfortunately. Um, but they put that on every week, and so that's a really great thing to go to. Um, I know that they also have a drum circle that you can join. Um, I'm not sure how often they meet, but you show up and they give you, you know, a big drum to bang on. And it's really fun. Uh, I went to that a couple, a couple of times as well. Um, yeah, and then I think those are the two main things that I'm aware of. Um, but Have I know you attended a completion ceremony, one of the international completion ceremonies? Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, after I um, studied abroad here, I attended one of those. Um, yeah, and so those are put on, I think, every semester as well um, for students, yep. you know, that are completing their um, studies. You can attend that. And that's really fun, too. Um, yeah. And then they yeah, that can on, be really good for students who can't, you know, either they're, they're studying abroad, they're not graduating from JCU, but also even full degree students. Sometimes it's not possible to return for graduation because there's a, a long gap between completion. And so, yeah, we do, we run a completion ceremony. It's quite, quite fun, but also quite formal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just two more questions I wanted to ask. And one is just about um, living. Where do students live? And, and I'm conscious that you know, it varies by from person to person, but what sort of style of living is it? Do, do all students live on campus in dorms or do students live off campus? And what's the style of living like? So there are a lot of um, on-campus options at JCU in Townsville, if you'd like to do that. Um, when I first moved here, when I studied abroad, 
And then the first semester of my PhD, or sorry, the first semester of my master's, um, I lived on campus. And then after that, um, I decided to move off campus into a house. Um, and I feel like that's what a lot of people, that's what a lot of students do here. Um, and so there are some suburbs that are really close to JCU that a lot of students live in. Um, and there are a lot of like student share houses, you know, that you can find. Um, and so that's what I did for, you know, the first year. Um, yeah. And so now I just live in a house and I feel like that's what most people do. They, you know, live in a house with other students. Um, and it's good because it's a, you know, it's a way to meet other students in Townsville if you just moved here. And it's also um, good because it's, it's cheap. It's cheaper to live with more people. Um, yeah. And that's, that's sometimes not the same in the countries where students are coming from, that it's actually cheaper to live off campus and on campus in, in Australia in general. Um, so my last question, it's, it might be a bit of a stretch of your imagination, but I also know recently you haven't been able to go back and forth to go home. So this is really thinking about how you manage, you, you've moved from the other side of the world now twice um, to come and study at JCU. And some of the, I suppose, the strategies or techniques you use to um, to make that a positive experience and, and to remain connected with family and friends back home. Yeah. Um, so in general, I... I just love traveling. Um, I'm someone that really enjoys, you know, traveling as much as I can. Um, so when I first moved to Australia, I was really, I mean, every time that I moved to Australia, it's been a couple times now, I've been really excited. Um, and one good thing that I found is that to have, it helped make me not so homesick is that Australia is very similar to the US. Um, and I actually wasn't prepared for that. I was expecting, you know, something really different. And so that was nice because it actually, you know, it helped me feel more at ease almost immediately when I moved here. Um, yeah. And then another thing that I've been doing lately, you know, because of COVID, um, I'm really close to my family. And so it has been quite difficult not being able to go home and see them. And so what I do is I FaceTime them like all the time. Um, and that, you know, it's better than talking on the phone because you can see their face. So it's almost like you're there with them. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I've been doing. And then it also helps to have a close friend, friend group. Um, so last year because of COVID, you know, I wasn't able to go home for Christmas and then I won't be able to go home again this year. And so what my friends and I did, because most of us were kind of stranded in Townsville, uh, we had like an orphan Christmas. And so we're planning on doing that again this year. Um, so it helps, you know, having that close friend group that you're able to celebrate the holidays with and, you know, do anything with them that you would be doing with your family if you could go home. Yeah, that's that's really great advice. That that network can be everything when things are tough and, and good, right? Having the having the mm -hmm. friendship group that's, you know, there for you no matter what. Well, that really brings us to the end of our time. It always goes by so quickly. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, Maddie. It was really valuable insights and, and for your time when I know the life of a PhD student is is time poor sometimes. <laughs> so so thanks so much for joining us. Um, Caddy, did you have anything that you wanted to say to wrap up? Yep, that's it. And I think, are you guys going back to the chat room or are you wrapping up for the day? Uh, no, I'm heading back into the chat room. Maddie's going to get back bit. to her studies. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maddie. That was awesome. Um, yeah. And so for everybody who's attending, if you guys do want to speak with Wendy for a little bit more, you're welcome to. Otherwise, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Thanks guys. So we'll see, see you later. Bye. Bye.